Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adam vs. the Man Rocking Chair Edition Coronaphobia Day. Uh, the day we got the test edition, and we'll be coming back to that in a little bit here. Uh, we are back at the Garden of Freedom in No Force One Studios. I am joined today by Samantha Morgan Miller Carnaguchi Kokesh. Why do you hate watching me? your comments on this live video so that we can have a calm, adult, reasonable conversation about the health crisis that we find ourselves in, the fear crisis, coronaphobia, the state of semi martial law, the rising tide of what is laid bare now is Donald Trump's fascism. All right, Gus Kiriopoulos is with us today, and Richard Manzo, good to see you guys. Uh, here at the Garden of Freedom, we are really excited about our new business, Big Igloo Geodesics. So, side sponsorship announcement here. Uh, I've been building geodesic domes here at my place, and at the end of this video, Sam, remind me, I'm gonna pick up the camera and show people. We have people building a dome outside right now. We have my 28 foot uh, one bedroom house creation here. We have some plans for a geodesic greenhouse, Wallapini as our next proof of concept structure. And we've got the shop now where I built all these dome components, the struts that go into making these domes. Now set up in our shipping container, I have an off grid, off record, underground business here as a construction company, technically, at least according to Facebook, making domes. So right now, we're technically live as a business. If someone wants to buy uh, a geodesic dome uh, for, for whatever purposes, you want a custom order frame, send us an email, biggiglugeodesics at gmail.com. You've got in this video my just my personal email in the description as well, adam at thefreedomline.com, same thing. Uh, happy to custom design and build geodesic dome projects. What we have here is the equipment to make the struts out of conduit. So we have a specially designed chop saw, table saw, and a uh, chop saw mounted on a table, excuse me, and a really cool rare machine called a stamp press that runs on a flywheel. You put the end of the tube in there. For, anyway, Sam's already rolling her eyes going, Adam, we have so much news to get to. You haven't done a headline show in three freaking days now this is it's, uh, since friday right so uh right now i'll just wrap this up for those of you who are cool enough to be tuning in for this video if you want to get hooked up with big igloo geodesics right now uh the the only thing that's sort of live is a sneak preview is our uh instagram big igloo geodesics and our website we got parked is so cool big igloo biz it just redirects to the facebook page for right now so um, already questions about this. Chris Cole, can I live in your land in a dome? Family law got me homeless. Thank you. That's Chris Cole, the head of victims of family law for Kokesh. Something that came up uh, in, in our interview with Dr. Mary J. Ruert yesterday, which I also want to be very careful to mention at the beginning of this video. If you haven't watched that, go out, go, go watch that. I posted it on Facebook and YouTube yesterday. That was our, our main show. Uh, I just did a quick live to say hi to everybody, but there was a uh, really awesome conversation with me and, and, and Dr. Ruert. She is uh, really, within the Libertarian Party, within the Freedom Movement, uh, one of our most trusted uh, medical experts. She, she, she actually has done the medical research to demonstrate that the FDA, simply in its manipulation of drug approval processes, has been responsible for somewhere north of 40 million deaths. And that's very conservative estimates that she can directly pin on the FDA. That's right, the FDA, responsible for tens of millions of deaths. Tens of millions more Americans who would be alive or have lived longer if it wasn't for the existence of the FDA. So very important interview. And I, I want to come to the conclusion that, that she came to on this. And, and this is from someone who, who I trust the most. Who's, and she's 70 years old herself. So she considers herself in a higher risk bracket. If it, Now, I'm still skeptical about that. If you create, and, and by the way, I'm more inclined to the 5G theories as having something to do with coronavirus now, because basically if you if you look at death rates and say there's this mysterious nothing or, or whatever illness, and I'm not saying coronavirus is nothing necessarily, but if you say that, you know, what are, well, what age are people dying at? Well, people naturally die, you know, as, as they get older more often than when they're younger. People with natural with with pre-existing conditions die at a higher rate than people who don't have pre-existing conditions. I really believe that 
as these numbers are teased out even more, we're going to see the threat of this virus and the understanding of what it really is come down and down and down. And and, and Dr. Ruert is Dr. Ruert is genuinely with or generally with me on that. But she says there's still a possibility it could be a little bit worse than what we're seeing. Not not likely. She's saying that you know it's most likely to keep coming down in terms of the the real health risk and the fatality and the virality of all this. Um, but that if it if it's just as bad as they're saying it is now, and remember the big revision in in terms of the health estimates were for the UK and, and the US, and I hate to use this, you know, Anglo-centric, amero anglic centric view of the world, but in the UK their estimate was five hundred thousand and two point two million in the US with this certain modeling uh predicting prediction that they made in Oxford. And then it came down in the UK by a 25-fold factor to 20,000 in the United States from 2.2 million to as low as 100 to 200,000 so that's you know again by, by if it's 2.2 million to 100,000 that's a scale of, of reduce of 22 is 122 122nd you know it, 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 the actual danger has been exaggerated by those numbers just so ridiculously but to the extent that there is a real health threat here's what it comes down to for her and I said, this is this is really important because like I consider myself young health. Except right now, I'm doing this. I'm doing this show today from my rocking chair because my back's fucked up. This is this is this is like people have been asking as a presidential candidate, how has coronaphobia affected your life? Well, I fucked up my back being stupid. That's because I did I did legs the last day that we were able to go to a gym that was open, and then we were in some very difficult logistical situations because not of the coronavirus because of coronaphobia because of government restrictions because of shutdowns in the state of emergency and we were kind of caught with the rv in michigan if you'll recall a few weeks ago uh when things started locking down and we decided to go to texas maybe we're going to camp out in texas until their state convention or until the national convention and then it was like oh well we're gonna go we're gonna go home but we're gonna do a little tour first and it was just a lot of stress driving, not working out, sitting on the the, uh, the bench that I normally do my show from here in the RV with my back at a funny angle. And now I'm like, I'm stupid and flexible. It's ridiculous. And it hurts to move, like to bend over for anything. So that's how coronavirus has affected me. But please see the video with Mary J. Or, uh, yeah, Dr. Mary J. Ruart. And what what she said is like when she goes out, and she's not gonna she's not gonna limit her lifestyle at all. She's seventy. She considers herself by age to be in a risk category. She's still going out and doing everything she can that she would normally do, but with a mask and hand sanitizer. She doesn't like gloves. She prefers hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I prefer gloves because I use them like like work gloves. I, you know, whenever I'm out, you know, here at the farm doing doing any work or building domes, I'm I'm wearing some kind of uh, nitrile coated gloves usually. Like work gloves. And it's easy to just take them on and off. They're not disposable or, or semi-disposable gloves. So I, li I like to do that. Uh, but what, she, what I asked her that, that I think really was the crux of this interview is if, if you're recommending, and, and her general recommendation is everybody needs to decide for themselves. She's she's true not like a deeper level of libertarian than me even. We're like, well, what would you recommend this person to do or that person to do or this business or should churches be holding? Or she's like, well, it depends, and it, and they should decide for themselves. And I said, well, you know, what are you doing, and what would you want me to do? You know, so she goes to a grocery store. She's wearing a mask and using hand sanitizer consistently. And I said, well, what would you, you know, would it make you uncomfortable if I wasn't wearing a mask? And she goes, yeah, sort of. You know, if we're passing in a grocery store aisle, we're coming within six feet of each other. I'd rather you be wearing a mask. So this is this is my recommendation to people in general. And again, decide for yourself. But if you're in public right now, whether it's correct or not for people to be scared, to recognize that people are scared. That to be polite, if you're in an area where a, a, a grocery store or a Walmart or anything like that, that, that you wear some kind of mask when you're around other people, really easy. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be N95. The, part of the point is that you're, you're signaling to someone that you respect this threat. You respect their personal space. You respect their hygiene. It's a weird time. If this is what you have to do to communicate that, then we generally want to communicate that. And it's so that, you know, if you're, if you're covering your mouth, you're not going to be coughing droplets out onto other people. And so if you want to be, you know, extra polite, and, and I think this is what, what I'm going to be doing. So if I go out to run errands from, for, for the time being, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear a bandana. And if I'm in proximity with other people, I'm going to pull it up. 
And if, uh, you know, if I was afraid for, and this is, this is the, I'm, I'm, I'm showing people that I acknowledge the reality that I might be an asymptomatic carrier and I'm going to take a reasonable precaution to not expose you to my breath or, or to my, my droplets, right? So I think, that, I think that's a worthwhile conclusion. I think it was a great conversation. I'm really glad it went that way. So the latest fear monger actually before i get into that i want to say everybody if you're watching this please share this video right now especially in this this time of crisis this corona phobia it is all the more important that we have a reasoned cool calm collected adult conversation about what's going on where we're able to put things in perspective and so right now my amazing wife sam is taking notes on comments anything you want to interject here before i get to my my first big point for the day and in, in the headlines uh daniel rebels ask adam how do you feel the psychology of the american people will de-escalate when government says the threat of the virus has passed there will be a lag that's a very good question and and one of the stories i want to get to today is a little bit about public opinion on this um you know people thinking that donald trump should be wearing a mask uh, people saying that right now, even if, and I've seen a survey on this, that people saying that even if all the restrictions are limited, they would still stay home. And it's it's created this layer of fear yeah. that, that in a way is a good thing when it's general germophobia, right? In the way that I would say that I'm a bit of a germaphobe. It's just a conscientiousness of infectious diseases, of what it means to be a part of the giant human Petri dish, what it means to be shaking hands with people on a regular basis. So in that sense, there's a good fear but there's there's also the the bad fear of it being overblown and of the rally around the authority effect, and this is you know one of my major concerns with the the effect on the libertarian movement, the libertarian party. 9/11 created a huge rally around the leader effect. Anybody who was saying no, we need a non-interventionist foreign policy back then, like the libertarian party, was thought of as crazy. You want more uh, comments? Uh. <clears throat> Tomlin Flat says, I feel like post-mortem tests could be skewing the infected and dead rates. What do you think about that, sweetie? Post-mortem tests could be skewing, skewing the, the infected, infected and dead, dead rate. Yeah. Um, there's so much data to untangle here that, it, you know, it's... And it's not just that there's so much data. That would be one thing. But when when... If you're trying to assimilate that data, even if you're a CDC official in the United States and you go, okay, China's giving us these numbers, Italy's giving us these numbers, but they mean different things. If Italy says we've had so many deaths from coronavirus and they mean anybody who's died and tested positive for it, and in China they mean people who have tested positive for it before dying and they don't test people after they die, right. that would skew things a whole host of different ways. And if anything, we know that the general incentive of everyone involved here is to exaggerate, yeah. is to make it worse. And and when you see that over and over and over again, you go, oh, come on. So that gets to, to my first point. That's a perfect segue. Before we get to any more comments or questions here, the big fear that's being used right now to scare people to stay in isolation, to stay in hiding, to stay submissive to their governments, is that there is a possibility that you can get reinfected with coronavirus after testing negative for it. Yeah. Should I jump ahead to the punchline here? It came out just a couple days ago that up to one third of negative test results are false negatives. There, there aren't very many false positives. So from what we've seen in the way that this test is being administered globally, if you test positive, it's it's almost a guarantee that you did the test right. And by the way, we're, here's let's do this for a second. Okay, while we're on here's, that subject of the test, Stephen McClure asked, what do you think about Joshua Smith getting his home test? I'm really excited about that because he got the same one as me, and we got this from my friend uh, Jacob Clark in Kentucky, actually, who is running for... I believe it's Congress in Kentucky. Um, so we're going to be doing a separate video right after the show, actually. So stay tuned. We're going to just we're going to record and post it uh, and edit it up separately. So this is it, the one-step test device. And on the back here it says COVID-19 one GG one G IgM rapid test cassette whole blood serum plasma. So there it is. And there's something on here that creates a chemical response to the specific RNA chain in coronavirus. Apparently, this one 
Uh, also tests for antibodies. It comes with an alcohol prep pad because you're going to swab the site that you're going to prick yourself. And it comes with the, uh, the little razor in a tube prick device because it requires just a tiny bit of blood. And fortunately out here we have, we have a little saline nasal spray, which uh, you know, we're going to get the directions, make sure, make sure this is correct, but that this as a, as a buffer fluid is going to be adequate to do the test. So the reason there are so many false names, I mean, look at this, it's, a, it's an at-home test. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pregnancy test, essentially, right? And you know, they've compared it to that. But here's the thing. What if I fuck this up? Right. It's really easy to get a false negative. It's really hard to get a false... When you're saying, I'm going to take a drop of human blood or a speck of human blood, and I'm going to chemically match it up somehow to, to an RNA fingerprint of a microscopic virus. Yeah. If you get that right... You thread all those needles that we're able to do with this modern technology today. That's freaking amazing. The odds of that being wrong and what we've seen are, are pretty low, right? But what are the odds of fucking it up? There's so many things it says even on the test. Don't be in an area with high winds or a strong air conditioner. Or don't do this next to a fan that could throw off the test results. The, 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 test, the test has to be stored at a certain temperature. So to the reinfection myth, I want to dispel this right away because it seems extremely unlikely. I can't prove this. I can't say, hey, there's no way you could possibly get reinfected with this. We don't know that. But here's what they're using. I want to, Here's what I'm going to do right now with just a little bit of logic to dispel the evidence and reason that they're using to create this giant fear-mongering effect of you could get reinfected. Which means, and what this means, the, the, the psychological, political, social implications are, if you've ever been exposed, you are now a threat for the rest of your life. Because it could come back, you could get reinfected, this thing is always out there. And there's no such thing as herd immunity. There's no such thing as you have it and you have the antibodies. No, but that, that's, that's a really scary possibility. That would, that would take this genuine health crisis which is you know dr mary j ruert said is somewhere on the scale of a bad out of season weird flu phenomena and take it to a whole other level if that's what it could be that would that would jack it up but here's the thing is that what they're saying is that there were a limited number of patients tested in china who tested positive then tested negative then tested positive again well no shit if a third of your tests are negative there's going to be a certain number that if you do three tests, they're going to test positive, then negative, then positive, because they were positive the whole freaking time. So imagine you have you have a thousand, uh, well, let's say you have, you have a, a hundred coronavirus patients, and they're all in a hospital, and they all test positive, and you're trying to study the effects of the virus over time, right? So a thousand of them are, are sick, they test positive, and then a month later. You test them, or really two weeks is what we're looking at here is the sort of reasonable estimate of what's what's an appropriate quarantine period if you've been exposed or if you've had it, you know, two weeks from the end of having symptoms, right, uh, or, or from possible exposure. But if, if there are a 100 of them, they all test positive. Two weeks later, they test them again. If they all still have it, a third of them will test negative now because they are using faulty testing methodology or faulty tests, or whatever it is that is leading them now to say openly that a third of the of the negatives are false negatives. So then you get over here, and you go to the, the third testing interval, another two weeks later, you test those same 100 patients, if they all still have it, unless this is assuming that they were really bad cases, like really virally took root. They had lung fluid. They had symptoms lasting a number of weeks. That's a realistic thing with the flu, with number of similar coronaviruses. That's something that we're seeing as a, a looks like a real part. I'm not disputing this, a real part of the coronavirus experience that some people have it where you're sick for a long time. So again, in my statistical th analysis here, proving that this is ridiculous is that if, if you had... 100, you're, we're assuming that these are really bad cases that are going to be testing positive over all three test intervals, starting point two weeks later and four weeks later. So if you have a third, if they are all testing positive on day one, that's how you select them out of your hospital population. You have 100, they all, they're, they're all testing positive. Sec, first follow-up test, a third of them are negative. In the second follow-up test, another random third will be negative. And what you'll have here is data that looks like a third of the people got 
better and tested negative and then tested positive again when the reality is you just had a fucked up testing system. And it's, it, it's, if you, if you skim the headlines, like most people <clears throat> and you see this, Oh, well, you know, they, they, they have evidence. Mm, could be reinfected. Oh, there's, there's evidence. There's tests and there's cases. And, oh, yeah, well, people could get reinfected. And you don't know. I might not be safe for you forever, grandson, because, you know, like that's... And you just stop and read behind the headlines for just a second, and you see the ridiculousness of this, and you get to, to, to view the world with a lot less fear, and that's so important. So uh, the, the other big headline story I want to get to today is a uh, sort of political intersection here with Donald Trump. And I love the meme. There's a meme now, right? You've seen this one, Sam? It's, it's Trump at the podium in the White House with his daily press briefing. And it, it, the, the caption says, We recommend that everyone wear masks and, 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 and stay six feet apart. And they're all, none of them are wearing masks and they're all right. standing shoulder to shoulder. And you go, mm-hmm. So this is the big, uh, the, the big, uh, the big public debate right now is: Should President Trump wear a mask? This is kind of disappointing because here's, uh, you know, and, and I mean, my my general take is, yeah, I mean, if there's a decent you know, possibility that he's going to be, uh, you know, sharing coughing uh, airspace with people, that yeah, you should wear a mask. Uh, three in four Americans now believe that Donald Trump should wear a mask. I hope we get some comments on that one. I know some people are going to say, I mean, do you, do you, like, for people who are, who are part of this conversation, do you think, Donald, let's do a quick survey of, of the 60 people watching right now live. How many of you think Donald Trump should, uh, should wear a mask? If, if Sam can tabulate this, just put Y for yes and N for no on, on should Donald Trump wear a mask. We'll get a, a general sense of the audience here. As of two weeks ago, 20% of Americans had believed that they were exposed to the coronavirus. As of now, 30%, 3 in 10 Americans believe they've already been exposed. Now, to what extent that's true, I'm actually inclined to believe that with the asymptomatic carrier phenomena and the widespread nature of this, that it is extremely viral and it is extremely mild in the sense that, and then even there, uh, it's, it's, it's most, I, I, I feel silly even using those words. Most experts would right away say, Adam, it's neither of those things. It's moderately, uh, uh, viral and relatively mild and it's it, what you know just put it in perspective like that but now i i, I am generally of the belief I, I should say that the number of asymptomatic carriers is still grossly under counted under reported and under included in the statistical analysis so uh one in five this is the other big statistic here one in five americans are afraid to get groceries right now. And part of this comes from the trend, which is really dumb and sick of people going out and licking vegetables and things like that. Um, but I did write some info on what the grocery Yeah, so yeah, I wanted I wanted to cover that as, as a follow-up to this. Thank you, dear. Uh, Ralph's and Food for Less, two major grocery store chains in the United States, are going to limit the number of shoppers and test one-way aisles. That's kind of interesting, right? That you would you would have a, like a, a floor pattern in a in a grocery store and only be able to walk once to prevent you can't can't have this. Yeah. Can't no can't and I get it, I get it that that's that's part of it, but compared to the checkout counter and but yeah, okay, taking that extra effort in in a voluntary way, going to that, kinda of interesting. Again, addressing the fact that if you're a grocery store, one five of your customers needs your product and is afraid to go get it. So if you can put them at ease, right, that's a good thing. Safeway and other stores have begun limiting conveyor belt use to one person at a time, spraying down belt, then the next shopper and their food on after the shopper before them has finished paying and left. So any other, uh, any other big stories about, we're gonna get to polling and Wisconsin. And uh, I, guess the, I guess the other big headline is that according according to the fear mongers in chief right now we are coming on the worst week and and I and I don't mean to downplay this because this is this is a real thing and and if we are coming to the peak of it right that's a good that thing that that it should be going down after this week if and again the bigger fear here is that if they're able to 
rip everybody off and manipulate society based on such a minor threat, are they going to be able to do it again? Are they going to be able to make it continuous? Like, okay, we're flattening the curve, but we're going to keep social distancing orders. We're going to keep the federal state of emergency going for another two or three weeks. That's already what's going to happen here, right? Trump has extended it to the end of April. So if that's the case, what could happen in those next three weeks? <gasps> it mutated, you know, and, and it already has mutated. And if I say the virus is mutated, if you don't know what that means, that sounds by itself really scary. Hey, Mimi Robson is joining us from California. Hey, Mimi, thank you for joining us today. Um, so if, if, where was I going with that? I just saw Mimi's name and was like, oh, Mimi's with us. Um, oh, so if in that three weeks, you know, oh, mutated. Viruses mutate all the time. This virus has already mutated several times. There are various strains. And, and, and part of why I am, uh, you know, I, I put in the description for this video that I have a COVID-19 test. COVID-19, not a coronavirus test. Because I'm referring to this test specifically. This is testing me for antibodies and the proteins associated with the COVID-19 virus, which is a specific virus. Coronavirus is the generic term, and I'm still calling this that, and I think it's important that we refer to this by the generic accepted term and not let the propagandists manipulate, well, now it's corona, uh, now it's, well, it's coronavirus, but now we're being smarter and precise, and you're, you're going to have to keep up with us uh, with the latest terms. Now it's it's COVID-19. Well, what if, and then the, the two, what, it's COVID-19-S and COVID-19-L? Yeah, Are those the two strains? SARS-CoV-2. Was, oh, yeah. So that's the name of the virus, right? Yeah. The name of the virus, I guess, technically, I wonder if the test says this. No, see, the test, th this technical term here says COVID-19, right? COV-SARS-2 is one name of the virus itself, and COVID-19 is the disease associated with this. And that's why there's... So if I say, ah, oh, it mutated! Well, now we don't know what the new one is. Well, yeah, but it already has. This is a normal thing, and generally, as viruses mutate, the tendency is for them to become less harmful over a course of mutations. And the, 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 well, when we say they mutate, it's like, yeah, that's why you got to get a different flu shot every year. And I'm like, you shouldn't. Don't get a flu shot every year. Generally, generally speaking, most people shouldn't get a flu shot. And, and I'm not saying on principle, but because they are so ineffective. Like Mary uh, Ruert said, if, if we had a better system of flu vaccines, she might in the future decide for herself. But right now, even as someone who's in her 70s, she uh, she never gets the, the seasonal flu shot. And so um, getting getting to that point where people are continue are, are this 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 might be the new normal. And that's why this conversation is so important. And that's why I'm doing this this way now, like this, not waiting to have better production values, not waiting to have a proper studio or editing support or anything like this. Right now, the show is me doing live five days a week. I have a lot of help from Sam gathering stories. I have a lot of help from all y'all in comments and everything like that. We'll get to comments in just a second, take another comment break. Uh, we have Joey Lee, G.I. Mary Jane, just posting these around, getting getting them on, on YouTube and Brighteon and as an audio for uh, for the podcast version of this. But really, right now, there's a, uh, a critical need for this kind of conversation. So, um, And Joey Lee, she's right there commenting right now. So with all that said, uh, any any sense on uh, the room on, on Trump in the mask or uh, any other comments to interject three, with, babe? Three for yes and seven for no for wearing the mask. Hmm. And I kind of tend to agree. I think that Trump wearing a mask would cause more fear along with his supporters. I think that... So should the recommendation nationally not be everybody wear a mask, but wear a mask? I mean, what would you... Are you... Because if that's, if, if that's a position you're taking... You're disagreeing with Dr. Ruert saying, hey, when you're around other people, to be polite, you should probably just put something on your face. I'm just thinking of, of it from, like, a fear aspect. Like, I think seeing the president like that would incite a little bit more fear, a little bit more mania with this. Is that a reason? <laughs> if it's the right thing to do and to set an example, because if, if that's the case, then then it's a good thing. I mean, you're right that there will be a negative effect. If Trump puts on a mask and everybody's, oh, shit, it's real now, and, and, and get a little crazier, there would be a bad effect. But if the, if, if the other effect is that people should be generally wearing masks in public and Trump doing it creates 
more uh, you know expectation that people will do that that might be a good thing for the for the virus that 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 actually where it could be that wearing masks right now in in those like in an office or or you know a grocery store interaction situation is a reasonable precaution i mean you can just cut a sleeve off a t-shirt and pull it over your head and then just you know wear it like a scarf like it's you can I'm talking for the normal for, for yeah he's gonna have a he's gonna have a gold one with Donnie, Trump on it yeah, right. Yeah, Donnie Smith says he should wear a Hello Kitty mask. Yeah, right oh, there, a Hello Kitty mask like like uh, Japanese style. Yeah. Um, so if that's the case, he should say, well, you know, I'm generally not gonna wear a mask in an appearance like when I'm on camera, if I'm not within six feet of people, but I'm gonna go out and shake hands, and when I'm shaking hands with people, I'm gonna wear a mask. If he's telling other people like. Right. I don't no, know, I your point. but if, if Dr. Ruert says, as a 70-year-old woman in this country, I am more comfortable with a young, strapping young lad like Adam Kokesh wearing a mask, or, or someone like Donald Trump wearing a mask, if I'm going to be shaking hands with him, and he might cough on me, and that there's a reasonable you know, liability with that, then it is an extra precaution and politeness for him to wear a mask. Maybe not in his office. Maybe he's assuming I think it's already everybody. It's hard to understand his vocabulary without something blocking. That's a good his point. Face hole. That's a good so. point. So yeah, I'm I'm a little I, I'm a little divided on this one. I mean, it, should the president wear a mask right now? Um, the president she, president shouldn't exist. Like so, like, you know, I, I I I'm I have to square it with that premise of of my worldview here, right? But should should a yeah, I think people should. I, I, so in a sense, if we should have a president, he should be wearing a mask. Right? I'm going to disagree with the audience here on this one. That if this is correct, and, and he's actually to the point of, of telling other people to wear a mask, he should be wearing one. And he shouldn't be anal about it, and he shouldn't make a big deal about it. He should have something slick and easy and convenient, and he can say, look, generally I'm not wearing it, but in these occasions where I want to be polite and I'm shaking hands with a lot of new people, I'm going to wear it. Do you ever see him being that articulate about anything whatsoever, though? That's a good point. Yeah, that would be my point. All right, fair enough. Okay, any other any other common interjections before we get to uh, politics and some more headlines and 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 the, the like the, the woman arrested in Florida, uh, scary scary stuff. Yeah, and you did watch the video I sent you. Yeah, right? I did. Yeah, I did. Yes, it's pretty bad. Um, let's see. Will Porter says one outlet reported that the New York death count could be higher from residents dying at home. You mean? I didn't understand that one either. Um, yeah, and, and I'm I'm generally glad that the the broader question that's being asked globally is is the cure worse than the disease? And right now you can't say, but we're going to be able to. They're not going to be able to hide the, the the eventually. I mean, they're going to be able to twist and distort and misrepresent this forever. Like for all time, there are going to be people saying or at least as long as governments exist, more or less as they do today, there are going to be people saying, thank goodness government was there to save us from the coronavirus. It would have been so much death. But uh, the general public narrative is, 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 I'm much more optimistic that it's going to be like a rock, where maybe we're not going to be, you know, maybe if there's some false premises here, you know, like with 9-11, we're not going to go, oh yeah, 9-11 was an inside job and we have to overthrow governments. And But we're, we're generally the consensus on Iraq was 9-11 did not justify an invasion of Iraq. In that sense, the cure was worse than the disease. And coming to that conclusion globally that, you know, uh, there are more people dying as a result of isolation, uh, as a result of depression, as a result of economic hardship. Ho- how many homeless people? Like, we're not even hearing about that. L- root, uh, looting, you, you know, rioting, like, it's not really a thing yet. But we know that uh, in some places, actually in New York in particular, stores are boarding up their storefronts to prevent looting, just to prevent theft. And, like, that's a, that's a relatively ex- extreme measure when we say, look... The government is imposing the, this this condition, these lockdown conditions. And as a business owner, I can't lock the door to my shop and walk away from it and know that cops aren't going to be there to stop someone from just breaking the window and busting in and stealing everything. I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of that. And I think the overwhelming disease or cure being worse than the disease, just statistics that are coming 
you know, even even a month or two behind just in the timeline is the, the nature of the phenomenon. Like first comes the virus, then comes the government response. The, you know, we're the, the statistics, you know, there's big, confusing, misrepresented statistics around all of this that are, of course, all going to be tamped down over time. But, you know, first it's the virus and then it's the government response. And, and when we get to the point where we can kind of analyze both of those side by side and we're starting to. It, not, nowhere near decisively yet. It's going to be at least another month or so before we're able to do what I'm describing here, where we can say, okay, the disease has killed this many people worldwide and has the potential to kill this many, and the, the isolation has killed at least this many and might, might lead to more. All right, so any other comments or, or questions worth interjecting uh, with here? Referring to the homeless, Joseph Nudd had commented a record number of homelessness with pregnant women right now. And he sent me a link that I'm going to be checking oh, out and getting down on. Oh, wow. And that's scary. So he sent me the link, and I will be checking up on it and doing some fact-checking and maybe go into it a little bit later. Yeah, hey, and I have it here from just now, Tomland Flats. Donald Trump is already wearing a mask. Did that just change today? Did we miss that? I don't that? know. I got that comment a while ago, but I haven't been able to check Cause it. Because I, I looked at Drudge Report right before going live on this show, actually, and it said I no Trump for, or no mask for Trump. Yeah, I haven't seen any of him wearing, any pictures of him wearing anything. Although he could be, when we started this... personally, and then he takes it off when he's on camera, so he doesn't look weak. I yeah, Tom, Tom, tell us, what you, tell us what you mean here, please. Alright, any other comments you want to jump in with me? Uh, no, there's two, there's a few that have to do with the home test that I will get to while we're doing it tonight for everybody that's okay. posting questions about yeah. the home test. So stay tuned. Oh, there are there quite there are more people want to know. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a really good short video with this and and, and show exactly what we're doing when we know uh, what the test is. So we've got the uh, the reader uh, thing in there. I don't, I don't even know the right term. Wait, a little prick in a tube. Oh. That's that's definitely not the right term for this, no. but this is. Don't it's call it a little a prick. prick in, a little prick in a tube. But this is the device that, that you use to prick your finger and, and, and collect a tiny sample of blood and <laughs> alcohol swab. And just what we had convenient uh, as a, a sterile saline nasal spray that we, we use as a, a buffer fluid apparently in the test. So stay tuned for that. All right. So L.A. County to give out $500,000 in grants to small businesses hurt by the pandemic. Now, it would be simplistic as a libertarian to bring back the classic analogy government breaks your leg gives you a crutch and then tells you see if it wasn't for government you wouldn't be able to walk but in the reality of how this is being carried out is that we, we're going to break everybody's legs and then we're going to give some of them crutches and if you don't get a crutch fuck you you're just screwed if you so every individual who doesn't get the exact perfect proportionate economic compensation for how they've suffered as a result of the coronavirus is economically disadvantaged while business owners are at an advantage against those individuals. Under the table businesses, like like what we're doing here, Big Igloo Geodesics, we're a small, and, and by the way, we're a small business that uh, I think we're going to do very well as a result. I think one of the, uh, sidebar, Another interjection for a little promotional plug here. One of the products that we want to be putting together here with Big Igloo Geodesics is the uh, bug out in a box where you'd have a uh, geodesic dome frame, plastic sheeting, like rigid sheeting and tape to make a temporary shelter and everything you need to set up and build, uh, you know, weeks worth of food, MREs, survival equipment, basic stuff so that if you're in a city and you go, ah, fuck, I got to get out of here. You grab the bug out in a box, throw it in the back of your car, throw it in your truck bed or the back of your SUV. And if you got to drive out to uninhabited land, you know, preferably, obviously, you're going to have to bring water or be, be near a water source. You know, it would come with a water filter, things like that. I think our business is going to be hugely helped by this. But if you look at even, you know, small businesses versus off the record businesses any independent entrepreneurs like if you're 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 a you know a painter who who sells paintings online or or on the street um that that's your business you don't have an EIN an employer identification number you're not going to be able to apply for one of these grants so what this is doing and and they're kind of, and I think in order to get away with what they're doing at the top, at the, with the airlines, and by the way, Reason.com did a great story on this. Like, 
why are we paying airlines to fly empty planes around? It's a requirement under the they're stimulus. Empty planes? It's a re- almost empty planes. They're flying way more than the demand even because it's one of the requirements for them to get their bailouts and the stimulus bill that they have to maintain some, you know, minimum standard of of providing services. But they're doing all these different small business things and and you might be inclined, I might I'm even inclined to look at that and go Hey, well, I, this is a better bailout. Like if they're good, like the 2008 bailouts where it's like just banks and major corporations, right? If they're doing that, that's really bad. If they're doing banks and major corporations and small businesses, well, that's better, but it's still fucking over the individual who's left out down here. And I think what they're doing is in order to get away with this bigger theft at the top now, they're, they're kind of like, well... We're going to get enough small business grants out there. We're going to pump some of these $10,000 you know, loans out there and things like that. And it's going to pacify people. So to the woman in Florida, this was scary. Uh, it, I mean, on so many levels. And I think about the paddle boarding video. I hope everybody's seen this by now. If you haven't, you can just do a Google search for paddleboard corona right you'll find this it's like super super viral dude in southern california out by himself paddleboarding in the ocean they send cops on shore and two boats to corral him and arrest him because the beach is closed yeah Doing the legal thing is more important than doing the right thing because not only did they prevent him from what he was doing as healthy social distancing. Right, that's as social distancing as you can get right now. Be in the middle of the ocean ocean. on a paddleboard. You're not going to get coronavirus. They grabbed him. They're walking him down the beach in handcuffs, holding him, touching him, exposing him to the virus. Absolute insanity. And then with this woman in Florida, similar case... Uh, but but a, 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 a sort of a, of, a, of a confrontation over lack of social distancing with with law enforcement. But in this case, it was a little more disturbing because it, 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 it it's this it raises the fear of the dystopia of if you get tested for coronavirus or if you post and this actually kind of get back gets back to our story at the RV place yeah. where they saw us saying on social media. Hey, we think we've been exposed and we think we have symptoms. And they they saw our bus pull out to their RV shop. And when we came in, I don't want to say they freaked out because they were they were they were professional about it. But no, well, to to be fair, they're scared and confused and and they don't get the the luxury that that you and I get. We take this for granted. And most people watching here, babe, don't even have the luxury that we have of if we see a story on our phones, you know, we have the time to, to indulge in, in doing the research and yeah. seeing past this. If they don't, they're just scared and, and, and manipulated by this. So in this case in Florida, a woman apparently post. So I didn't, I didn't get this from, from the video. How did the police identify her? And come and approach her. I have no That idea. was not in the video. No, because she just started filming when she got surrounded. When she was jogging. And right. It was on her social media when they asked when she was getting her test, I believe. that Because you have to give your ID to get your roadside test, I think. And then, I don't know if they take But she ID. wasn't... I have no idea. Was she tested or not? Like we don't. So there, but there was some confusion. Where she, she, according to herself in this video, she had, so she has this woman in Florida walking down the street or jogging, and uh, is, is approached by police. I, and I don't know if it's because it's quarantine. Maybe it's just quarantine, or or, or curfew. Like the, the streets are closed, like, and they're they're just doing. Are you an essential personnel check? And it's place like recreational jogging outside is not recre jogging outside is only allowed for essential purposes <laughs> for essential businesses. Um, but it, it, that's what I suspect happened is that she was jogging somewhere that it was essential travel only. So no exercise in public allowed. And they see that she's out there and they confront her and then maybe they get her ID and they look her up. Who knows exactly what led up to this, but she yeah. said on, they, they said that she had said on social. So there's a cop in the video saying, you said on social media, you have Corona. And she said, no, I said, I have symptoms totally different. And that, again, about the, the just devilishness of this whole thing is that, you know, anybody, they, they tell you, like, oh, anybody who's experiencing these symptoms or is asymptomatic or is experiencing mild cold or flu symptoms could have it. Well, guess what? Now, 
on any given day, 50% of the population is experiencing coronavirus symptoms, right? Is that fair? Now people get allergies on a daily basis or have a cold or a flu or, or sneeze cocaine. or do cocaine or, or, or whatever have so, or, or like, even for me, and I, this is where I feel dumb. Like I fell for this during those days where I was like, Oh, my back hurts. It's a weird flu soreness. It couldn't be from me abusing my body with extended driving and sitting periods or, or, or hard workouts. No, just, that was also it's gotta be I, Corona. Cause I had like a cold or that 48 hour bug or whatever. And my muscle soreness came with it, but that's very typical for me when I get the cold. That's a very common. Right. Thing I have. Right. So that's, that's what had us going, Oh shit. Is this, is this Corona? Um, so this woman in Florida, then they said, didn't you get, t didn't you test positive and or didn't you test 11 days ago? And I'm going, oh, fuck. Cops have the testing databases. And so now when they're enforcing curfew, if you've tested and tested positive or tested and, and what she said is, no, I, I did a quarantine that started two weeks ago from when I was exposed. Yeah, she said, I just got done doing a 14 day self quarantine. I'm still waiting on my results. Um, so she's being respectful. She's acknowledging all the parameters here and she's practicing social distancing. She's jogging alone on a street and she got arrested for dis for two charges, one disorderly conduct unsurprising that's anytime you disagree with a cop before they arrest you for something else they can charge you with that too and then two disobeying governor's orders there yeah so it's all of these things that raise some very scary possibilities do we, we don't have the curve of tyranny chart handy here but that's that would represent that curve of tyranny, that government line going up and getting worse. And even this incident in Florida is kind of where I predicted things would be going, getting worse. I, I will predict at this point that it, it's that there's going to be some leveling off, that it's not going to get vastly worse than them using social media and, and test databases to go, hey, well, you're out, you're not... You know, I'm going to give you an extra ticket and I'm going to arrest you and subject you to more, you know, uh, exposure to the virus. So to the treatments here, researchers claim there is a new potential medicine that can kill COVID-19 in just two days from, uh, what is this, Monash University's Biomedicine uh, Discovery Institute and the Peter Doherty Institute of Infection and Immunity published a report claiming that a drug developed back in the 70s to fight parasites, can re re uh, remove all viral SARS-CoV-2 RNA in 48 hours. The drug is called ivermectin. Is that how you would pronounce that? Ivermectin. And was originally developed to fight head lice, scabies, and other diseases found to be caused by roundworms. Now, one of the things that I learned from Dr. Ruert yesterday, mm -hmm. this is really important background to understanding what I just said, even when we talk about potential cures or treatments, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that if we were able to share data across the world right now and see what treatments are effective and what aren't, we would be able to reduce the death rate to probably less than the flu. It might take an extra effort. It might take ventilators being, you know, available in, in, in much larger supply if that's the case, but just what is an effective treatment? We have, as a species, as a, as a global human hive mind, the data is out there. It is the systems of government that we live under today that are preventing the proper assimilation and implementation of that data. The thing I got from Dr. Ruert was that in 1962, they passed a series of amendments to the Federal Food and Drug Act, or whatever it is that, that gives the FDA powers, modified FDA powers, so that the average drug approval time went from four years to 14 years. And if it was a life-saving drug that just by unnecessary bureaucracy takes an extra 10 years to get to the market, how many lives would have been saved in the meantime? Not only that, but this creates a huge misallocation of resources in, in research and development around these drugs that could be going to meet human needs, and instead, what do we get? SSRIs and penis pills. Like, that, that's, that's the effect of, of, of this misallocation of biomedical research and development resources to fit what the government, by regulation, has made more competitive and more profitable. And we would have, we would have something already that we know 
because there are people in other governments, or no, I should say in other, in other governments' jurisdictions who are testing different treatments and have found things that are potentially effective cures. And instead of having that conversation, we have rumors. We have people like Wayne Allen Root promoting some fake silver oxide cure and getting kicked off his radio show for it. And we have all these snake oil salesmen that's the result of this. And it's, it's just the unintended consequence of this is so backwards when we say well, we need government to make drugs safe. Well, what's the result? Drugs being kept off the market, confusion, snake oil salesmen come in to fill the gap. So it's it's really disappointing that that we live under the system and people are dying now directly because we can't communicate properly. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson is stable, remains in intensive care. Huge headlines across Drudge Report all over the UK saying that UK, they've hit their toughest week and that uh, Boris Johnson, uh, the Prime Minister there, yeah, Bojo is experiencing severe symptoms, was in intensive care. And um, I don't know, it seems like he, he's not that old as, as far as heads of state goes. Does anyone know how old? Uh, yeah. Boris Johnson is. Oh, hey, Sam Robb is with us today as well. Thank you for joining us, Sam. Oh, it's way back in the comments. Let me scroll up here and get caught up. Um, and Rainbow Jones, so well pointing this out here. Great wording, Rainbow Jones. Drug approvals go to the highest bidder. Yes. Uh, Joseph, not talk about Bill Gates, Adam. You know, I brought that up with uh, with, with Dr. Ruard yesterday in terms of the vaccines and, and the potential of uh, Bill Gates being, you know, some kind of eugenicist trying to get uh, you know, vaccines out, having, uh, you know, gone to focus on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation instead of, and, and what he resigned some position he had with Microsoft as like CEO or uh, chairman or something like that just recently. And there was this wave of CEO um, resignations, right? Earlier this year, January, February, undisputed. A lot of them saw this coming and just didn't want to be part of it. We're like, fuck it, we're going to get out of here before things get ugly. Oh, Sarah JB says he is 55. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson is only 55. So generally considered in a, in a low risk group. Is, I don't know. I don't think he has any pre-existing conditions. At least that I, I, I haven't seen that in, in any of the headlines here. So I, I think it, it, it's kind of this sensationalist thing. Like we saw uh, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, he's a host on MSNBC, right? Saying, oh, I've, he's, he got it bad and made a big deal out of it. Saying he was experiencing some kind of like hallucinations there there's this whole like and, and i gotta say i was kind of tempted by this myself like ooh, celebrity corona cases i could be one of the first celebritarians to to be oh positive God. with corona let's go get tested in dallas and it, it, it's not just that but that i want to use my own case to to bolster my narrative right if i suddenly became sick and was you know on my deathbed wheezing with this breathing glass shard sensation in my lung it would it would lungs it would it would kind of ruin my understanding of what the virus is right so if if you're 55 year old Boris Johnson or Andrew Cuomo who I think is even younger I don't know if we want to get can we get an age check on Andrew Cuomo though or anybody's been watching those stories for them to say, look, this is deadly. This is this is a media personality who just wants to sensationalize things. If you're Andrew Cuomo and you go, oh, it was so bad. I got to do my show from home and I'm having hallucinations. Um, oh, Tom Flats here jumping in. If you didn't catch it before, I said Trump was wearing a mask metaphorically. Lol. No, he's literally wearing a spray tan mask. It's got eye holes and no nose holes in it. And it's got a, an edge around his hairline you can see. Yeah, Donald Trump is wearing a mask, just not a protective mask. Fauci, Dr. Fauci, Will Porter wants to point out that Dr. Fauci is involved with the uh, Bill and Melinda uh, Gates Foundation. Oh, maybe uh, correcting me, sorry. Um, Chris Cuomo. Um, Cuomo? Chris Cuomo? No, Cuomo, but it's Chris. It's what did I, did I say, Andrew? No, it's Cuomo. Mm. That's the type. But That's it was... what she said right now. That's what I'm telling you. Right. Okay. So Dad, and... she's tagging him in it. I mean... Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, ventilators can cause pneumonia, according to Will Porter. That's interesting. And by the way, Will, thank you so much for using the Kokesh for President Facebook frame. Greatly appreciate that. If anybody else wants to do that on Facebook, put up, uh, you know, you go into your Facebook profile thing and there's a button you click to add profile frame, search yeah. Kokesh for President, oh, and find it. commented Kokesh for President 2021. 2021. Thank you. All right. Well, now, let's just, before we go here, uh, you know, we only have a few minutes left. I don't know. What time did we start? What time are we at here? Anyway, we're coming up on an hour. We're about eight minutes. Yeah, so I want we're coming up on an hour. I, I want to get to 
Um, well, first, one other statistical thing, and then the, the, some of the political implications of this. China recorded no new deaths Monday for the first time since it started started reporting figures in January. Okay, China, that's cute. Uh, Wisconsin's controversial election is on for today. Voters will get no extension on the deadline to return absentee ballots, thanks to two top courts that sided with Republicans on Monday. A big thing I'm excited about is a silver lining on this and how it ex as how it exposes that the, the duopoly is just totally full of shit, you know, kicking us when we're down, making things harder for us. And that even in a case like this of, hey, how are we, we going to decide how we're going to handle elections in our state? It comes down to partisan manipulation. So Republicans believe that they're going to be uh, they're they're going to do better as a result of going ahead with this as normal Democrats and and just uh, there's this there's this myth there's this there's this virus out there this fear that, that they can be used for manipulation in so many different ways and what do we see not hey let's let's do what's right for people's health it's it's let's do what's right for our political party yeah. so and here's here's one way that it's really bad because uh, and I think this is one of the ways it favors Republicans Democrats are more inclined to be voting in urban areas metro areas. Uh, polling locations in Milwaukee reduced from 180 to 5. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and predict that tomorrow you're going to see a lot of liberal outrage in Wisconsin over how this election was handled. They are doing voter lines spread out over blocks, maintaining physical distancing. So... This is a silly, petty thing, but when people are allowed to stand in normal proximity in a line with each other, they're going to go with a flow. If you force them to stand six feet apart, maybe that's a good thing, you know? And, and if you're going to say, look, for your voting right, we're going to make sure that people are six feet apart, then great. But it's going to slow things down. And what did they do? If, I mean, if everybody has to observe physical distancing, why would you have less polling stations instead of, uh more polling stations <laughs> hello so many voters say their absentee ballots never arrived uh, obviously there have been issues with supply chains with mail being delayed we've even experienced a little bit of that here uh, Amazon not making times just a little heads up for anybody who's staying at home and ordering stuff through Amazon um, so Wisconsin is on the verge of becoming the only state in April that fa failed to find a way to delay voting. And I, I know you wrote this down as something that was in the article about this, but if I was trying to rephrase this honestly, I would say find a way to delay voting or hold voting safely with appropriate physical distancing. It's not that hard. And I talked with, you know, this is, again, a big thing that came out of my conversation with Dr. Ruert yesterday is, okay, if you stay home, if you're on a desert island, yeah, your odds of getting coronavirus are zero if you're going out and and going to concerts where a bunch of people have it and you're doing a mosh pit now you know maybe your odds are 50 percent that you'll catch it but if all you do is go out to grocery stores and you wear a mask and 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 gloves your risk is negligible and it's this negligible of negligible as in you have a negligible risk of catching a virus that has a negligible risk of of causing you real harm so to say look it, we're gonna. Uh, what should have happened is that government should have said, "Look, we can hold votes and make sure that the risk of you being exposed at a polling place is negligible. We are going to make sure that there are lines on the ground six feet apart. We're going to make sure that there's no skin-to-skin -skin contact. That we have gloves and masks available at the door for people who want to come in. All of these things." would have made it relatively easy. And and if you if you understand, I, I know most people aren't even in this audience as nerdy about this political stuff as I am, but if you understand all of the administration and overhead that goes into holding a, a vote and printing ballots and all of that, having this little extra effort to say, we're going to hold the vote, but you can vote absentee. That, that's Hey, if you vote absentee, you're, what are your odds of catching the virus voting? Zero. We already have a, a pretty safe and reliable mechanism for most Americans who are like, I want to vote, but I don't want to be there in person. Hey, guess what? We've already solved that problem. The need to de actually delay a vote, totally ridiculous here. So uh, Surgeon General warns this could be the nation's most dangerous uh, week to date, right? Or 
what is it? Uh, most dangerous. What was this today? Comparing the scale of the potential loss to Pearl Harbor and 9/11. Yeah, well, I remember seeing that. Yeah. What was? It could be the nation's most dangerous to date, like just to like currently, you know. That's all. Warns this could be the nation's most dangerous week to date. That's it. A week, yes. Yeah, we week. didn't write the word week in there. That's why I was confused. Sorry. Yeah, so dangerous. No, but yeah, and hearing the comparisons to, to Pearl Harbor and 9 11, that's really scary. No, I, I, I maybe I, I thought you might have, it might have been referring to like the most dangerous event because that's what I'm seeing people compare it to. Like there's 9 11 and then there's coronavirus and then there was Pearl Harbor, you know, events that, that, that changed American history. So I think that's all we got for today. Any other comments that you want to share, babe? Any Anything else in here? No. Nope. Oh, Marcus Pulis, our press secretary, has joined us live today as well. If anybody wants to set up an interview while we are we are here in our uh, Garden of Freedom isolation, we'd love to do more interviews and online debates and things like that. Uh, Marcus has pointed out here when the economic damage comes due in September... There, or as I should say, is, is accounted for, right? The government will blame evil corporations. Yes, another very, very safe prediction. There's one that just popped up on my phone. Coronavirus. All right. Latest headlines live in real time. Check this out. Oh, it's going to be in reverse on the screen, isn't it? Yeah. Coronavirus task force unit working from home after positive tests. <laughs> How are they working nah, from home? Nah, That's nah. what I want to know. A White House unit operating under Vice President Mike Pence's coronavirus task force has been instructed to vacate where it was working after a partner of the unit tested positive, according to a new report and email sent by FEMA officials Monday evening obtained, obtained by NBC told staff members of the Supply Chain Resilience Task Force that they were required to telework as a result of the positive test. <sighs> We are certainly able to count our blessings living in very interesting times. And I'm so honored to have all of you joining us on a daily basis here, Monday through Friday, for Adam vs. the Man Live, as we know it now. Coming to you through the, let's just say, interesting platform of Facebook. And I, I'm just, I'm so grateful that we have so many great comments and people actively engaged. And it's helpful to me, even, to not be swept up by any of the fear or misdirection. Um, I'm going to say it one more time. Check out the interview yesterday with Dr. Mary J. Ruert, great libertarian activist, medical researcher. And share these videos. Grow, help us grow this conversation, grow this platform, grow Adam vs. the Man. Eventually, we're going to be doing this in a, in, in a studio, in a whole other format, where we're not reliant on Facebook Live. So help us get to that point. We want to build a studio here at the Garden of Freedom. We want to be able to have a mobile studio that's not just a curtain in the RV, but like a proper trailer that we can take around and, and have you know a good microphone set up and internet connection with hotspots and things like that. If you're interested in helping us build that out or anything else we have going on here at the Garden, if you want to buy a dome from Big Igloo Geodesics, send me an email. Excuse me. You go to bigigloo.biz. It takes you to our Facebook page. We're developing a little bit of a gallery there of what we're doing and what's possible. But uh, on that note, donate if you can. Donate donations there. Go to just all of our activism, supporting what's going on, getting this message out, whether it's through Adam versus the Man or through the presidential campaign. Everything that we can do to enlighten the world with the message of freedom. And yes, it hurts to stand up. Wow, I'm I'm pretty stiff. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna poke the camera outside the door here for just a minute give a little preview of what we're working on with big igloo geodesics and what we're going to be uh what we're going to be doing in the future here with the video when we we formally launch the business so right here behind me wow so like i got to turn the brightness up on my screen so that i can see what i'm looking at in the background here now it's it's really bright out beautiful so you can see right there behind me this is a 28 foot geodesic dome on a five foot pony wall of tires with an eight foot wall in the back here. This is gonna be a three story, uh, one bedroom house, sort of my dream house. Right there we have Jim Freedom putting together his very first dome. Let's see, can we get that, th that in focus there? So yeah, Jim Freedom is out there. We've got uh, one of our domes that is uh, being shelled for cement. We've got the camp kitchen out there. And 
over there in in our uh, shipping container and I'll, I'll show you guys this real quick oh we got Baloo hey Baloo it's been a while since Baloo's been on Facebook live everybody want to say hi to Baloo look at this the coolest dog ever my best friend all right buddy let's go show him the shop so check this out we're gonna give you guys just a, a real quick tour there's not much to see here. Don't get too excited. We got we got all sorts of conduit and stock on the ground here that we're building into domes and cutting up, and uh, you can see my big mess and all my materials back there. We got we got a bunch more conduit to uh, to cut up and to make these dome frames. Look at this. Thanks to Ernie, we we started with this huge inventory. There's even more. All of these dome pieces that go to make these. Uh, I think these are the, these red, green, and blue ones are the uh, 16 foot. Oh. 16 foot geodesic domes. I'm gonna probably lose signal in here with this metal box So don't be surprised if the connection goes away for a second here. This is the big stamp press uh, We've got videos uh, that, that Jim is doing for big igloo where you can see us uh, stamping The uh, the conduit to make these ends um, So you make them flat and rounded and punched holes so you can put them together in geodesic domes and just past that you can see we've got, I was telling you, this uh, specially designed chop saw mounted to a table here where you can cut uh, five sticks of, uh, of conduit at a time. Really cool setup. So big shout out. Thank you to Ernie Hancock, Ernest Hancock, freedomsphoenix.com. That's freedoms within us. Declare Your Independence is going mobile. And that's why he was able to, to basically loan us this gear to start this business right now. Very cool uh, flywheel press, uh, extremely heavy, difficult to move piece of machinery. So we've got it in here. And basically, if anybody wants to right now uh, to, to, to commission a dome, to custom order a dome, um, we can do basically anything that you can imagine, anything that you can, that you, that you can build with, uh, with these struts. But all the geodesic structures, I can do the math for you. Uh, give you instructions for putting it together. If you're within driving distance of Ash Fork, Arizona, or if you want to pay us to drive anywhere in the world, happy to come and uh, deliver and install one of these domes for you as well. So with that, mwah, peace and love, y'all. We will talk to you tomorrow. Actually, later tonight, at some point, we're going to be posting the, uh, the coronavirus test. We're going to go do that right now. So if you're watching this on YouTube later, subscribe. Make sure you don't miss that video. If you're on Facebook, sign up for notifications, follow me, all that. And just as importantly, get on my email list at thefreedomline.com because well, even that's not reliable. More importantly, be an active, engaged participant in the human conversation. And let's move this thing forward. All right. Peace and love, y'all.